In this video in our How-To GAN series, the thermal design for dual-sided cooling GAN transistors is discussed. Thermal design becomes increasingly critical as power density increases with the latest generation of GAN transistors, where smaller die sizes and chip scale packages are harnessed to improve electrical performance. This video will show how heat extraction from a small GAN transistor or integrated circuit with a good thermal design can be as effective as from a bulky silicon MOSFET. The thermal models for GAN devices in chip scale packages will be reviewed. Then the attachment of a heat sink will be discussed. Next, a simple thermal management solution for an entire GAN based power conversion system will be shown. And finally, the performance impact of heat sinking is analyzed and demonstrated. For chip scale devices, the devices are flipped upside down and the back surface, the case of the device, becomes the top side. This cross section diagram of a chip scale packaged GAN transistor shows two distinct thermal heat dissipation paths. One path is down through the ball grid or land grid array pads, solder joints, and into the PCB. The heat may then be dissipated directly to ambient air from the PCB or through a heat sink on the opposite side of the PCB using thermal vias. The second path is up through the top or through the sides of the die. Heat can flow through the top of the die as well as out the sides of the die by means of radiation or convection. Junction to case thermal resistance, R theta JC, is defined as the resistance from the active surface of the die to the case, which is the top surface of the substrate for a chip scale GAN transistor. Junction to board thermal resistance, R theta JB, is the thermal resistance through the solder bumps or solder bars from the active surface of the transistor to the copper traces on the PCB. In series with both of these resistances are the board to ambient and case to ambient resistances. These resistances tend to be high value compared to R theta JC and R theta JB. When factoring the two parallel paths, the total thermal resistance is the junction to ambient, or R theta JA. This figure shows the thermal resistance for some examples of silicon MOSFETs and chip scale GAN transistors. The thermal resistance is shown on the vertical axis in relation to devices and their area given on the horizontal axis. As shown, the junction to board thermal resistance illustrated by the circles follows an inverse trend with the device size. However, the junction to case thermal resistance illustrated by the squares in the graph on the right is much lower for GAN transistors because of the chip scale package and demonstrates that chip scale GAN transistors can achieve much lower junction to ambient thermal resistance with an effective heat sink connection on the top side compared to silicon MOSFETs. Silicon MOSFETs are illustrated with the red squares. As with most converter designs, the thermal performance of GAN transistors can be improved by attaching a heat sink, thereby reducing the thermal resistance between the junction and the ambient air. For a chip scale GAN transistor, heat can be extracted from the top, bottom, and even the sides of a device much more efficiently than can be done with a packaged MOSFET, as we saw earlier. When adding a heat sink to the system, we still have the junction to case thermal resistance and the junction to board thermal resistance, as well as the board to ambient thermal resistance. With the added heat sink, we now have a case to heat sink resistance and a heat sink to ambient thermal resistance. A good heat sink design will have a very low R theta SA. The half bridge circuit is a common building block in many power electronic circuits and is used here as an example for thermal modeling of GAN based power stages.
The thermal behavior of a half-bridge power stage, for example a buck converter, using chip scale GAN transistors can be modeled with the lumped parameter equivalent circuit shown here. This model includes parameters that represent most of the significant heat flux paths in the converter. The three primary heat sources in this example are power losses from Q1, Q2, and the filter inductor, shown here as P sub L. Now let's look at a real-world example. Shown here is a cross-section of half-bridge circuit that you might find in a buck converter, motor drive, or a whole host of DC to DC converters. For this example, we're going to add a heat sink, and we're going to add gap filler. In this example, Berquist 3500S35, which in its data sheet has a thermal resistance of 3.6 watts per meter Kelvin. We're going to make sure that the thickness of the gap filler above the two FETs is between 0.1 millimeters to 0.3 millimeters. And we'll use two ounce copper in our PC board. Here's our baseline case. We're taking a four square millimeter die. We're adding the gap filler. We're gonna take the worst case or 0.3 millimeter spacing to the heat spreader. And we get a result of 6.3 degrees C per watt at six watts of dissipation. And from this thermal diagram, you can see that the, the highest temperature is 137.8 degrees C with a heat spreader set at 100 degrees C or a total rise of 37.8 degrees C with 6 watts. Now let's look at several options for constructing our thermal system. In the green boxes we show what the devices look like mounted down with and without a shim. The shim is made out of copper. The dimensions are 1.5 times 3 times 0.7 millimeters, or about the same size as the device. And it's mounted right next to the device. The right-hand cross-section shows what the device looks like mounted down. Uh, in this case, we have a heat sink in gray above the device. We're going to vary the gap filler from 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. And we're going to vary the gap filler material both the 3.6 watt per meter Kelvin and also the better 6 watt per meter Kelvin uh, gap fillers. Here's a table showing you the impact of each of those variables. First, the baseline case, where we have no shim, the worst case thickness, the worst performing filler, and it gives you a thermal resistance of 6.3 degrees C per watt. That allows you to dissipate 4 watts if your maximum temperature rise of your device is allowed to be only 25 degrees C. In the best case scenario, number 4 on this list, we've added the shim, we've reduced the thickness to 0.2 millimeters maximum, we've used the improved 6 watt per meter Kelvin filler, and it gives us a thermal resistance of 3.9 degrees C per watt, which allows you to dissipate 6.4 watts in this tiny device before you see a rise in the junction of just 25 degrees C. And here's just the thermal image of that. In this case, we've added the 1.5 by 3 by 0.7 millimeter shim, we use the 6 watt per meter Kelvin gap filler, and we have 0.2 meter spacing from the uh, top of the device to the heat spreader, and you can see the maximum temperature rise is 125 degrees C, with the heat spreader held at 100 degrees C. In this video, the thermal models for GAN devices and chip scale packages were reviewed and a simple solution for heat sinking was discussed. 
Finally, the performance improvement achievable with this solution was shown. For more detailed information about thermal management for GAN transistors, please see the third edition textbook, GAN Transistors for Efficient Power Conversion, or view more videos in the How To GAN series. And for more information on eGAN FETs and IC products and evaluation kits, go to epc-co.com.